Good evening, we are on Wednesday, the 28th of September 2022. I'm going to do the liturgical readings for the Mass for today. Um, this is Wednesday of 26th week of Ordinary Time, Year 2. I will begin with a, a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom his love commits me here, ever this night be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Holy Michael Archangel, defend me in this day of battle. Be my safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, I humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell, Satan, and all the wicked evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. I pray that for the whole world. It seems each day we're nearer and nearer to having a third world war. The news today is not good. Not that I listen to the BBC or anything like that because I don't trust the media. I don't believe that we receive the truth. I believe that we are given um, false information or no information or distracting, take your mind off what is really happening. And um, there is no way on earth that Russia would have destroyed a pipeline themselves that they spelt, spent their own money building to give um, gas or whatever is, is, is in the pipeline to Germany and Europe. There is no way they would do that because they'd in the future have to spend more money to redo it. And there is evidence in Biden's speeches that he has a way of destroying Norse too. This is evil. These evil people in the world want a third world war. Will I dedicate all my prayers today, tonight and every day against war? But we must be prepared for the worst. They are evil and they are mad. Whoever they are, whichever side of the, the, they are, there is no way that Russia itself wants a nuclear war. They would not destroy their own pipes. They're being blamed for it, but I do not believe that is the truth. Anyway, I'm going to pray. I'm going to read the, the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to give all of us the spirit of discernment to find out the truth and to pray against the people who've done this and are doing it, who really seem to want war and they think that we can't see it. Well, we're hearing planes up there for the last 48 hours, war planes, not ordinary civilian planes, war planes over Norfolk and Suffolk. There's lots of USAF bases here, they've always been here. They've not left since World War Two. So we need to pray, all of you listening. We need to pray. We're really facing a dangerous time. And poor Germany is facing a freezing cold winter. Russia had the opportunity to turn off everything. They let it be flowing. Germany were waiting for a solution then it could have been turned on. And it isn't the Europeans who turned that and destroyed that and destroyed all the wildlife and all the everything that lives in the sea. 
How could they be so wicked? How could they be so wicked? That is just wickedness. Wicked, mad people in charge of the world. Anyway, put that aside and pray with me. The, the, I will um, tell you what the readings are. The first reading will be from the book of Job, 9, chapter 1 to 13 and 14 to 16. And the theme, how can man be in the right against God? And the psalm is Psalm 87. And the response, your response, let my prayer come into your presence, O Lord. Yes, we need that right now for the world. And um, I have accepted the loss of everything. And I look on everything as so much rubbish. If only I can have Christ and be given a place in him. Your word is a lamp for my steps and a light for my path. And a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 9, verses 57 to 62. So I ask you to pray with me today, this evening. and We should do a nine-day novena privately and against a World War Three and all these evil forces. We're going to have bad times, one way or another. But God is in control. He allows it. He allows mankind who are evil to hang themselves. But it takes down some of us as well. So be ready. A reading from the book of Job. How can man be in the right against God? Job spoke to his friends. Indeed, I know it is as you say. How can man be in the right against God? If any were so rash as to challenge him for reasons, one in a thousand would be more than they could answer. His heart is wise and his strength is great. Who then can successfully defy him? He moves the mountains, though they do not know it. He throws them down when he is angry. He shakes the earth and moves it from its place making all its pillars tremble. The sun at his command forbears to rise, and on the stars he sets a seal. He and no other stretched out the skies and trampled the sea's tall waves. The bear, Orion, too, are of his making, the Pleiades and the mansions of the south. His works are great, beyond all reckoning. His marvels past counting. Were he to pass me, I would not see him, nor detect his stealthy movement. Were he to snatch a prize, who would prevent him or dare to say, What are you doing? How dare I plead my cause then or choose arguments against him? Suppose I am in the right. What use is my defence? For he whom I must sue is judge as well. If he deigned to answer my citation, could I be sure that he would listen to my voice? The word of the Lord. 
thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Psalms, taken from Psalm 87, and your response. Let my prayer come into your presence, O Lord. Let my prayer come into your presence, O Lord. I call to you, Lord, all the day long. To you I stretch out my hands. Will you work your wonders for the dead? Will the shade stand and praise you? Response. Let my prayer come into your presence, O Lord. Will your love be told in the grave or your faithfulness among the dead? Will your wonders be known in the dark or your justice in the land of oblivion? Response Let my prayer come into your presence, O Lord. As for me, Lord, I call to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Lord, why do you reject me? Why do you hide your face? Response Let my prayer come into your presence, O Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Your word is a lamp for my steps and a light for my path. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I have accepted the loss of everything and I look on everything as so much rubbish if only I can have Christ and be given a place in him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The theme. I will follow you wherever you go. As Jesus and his disciples travelled along, they met a man on the road who said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another to whom he said, Follow me, replied, Let me go and bury my father first. But he answered, Leave the dead to bury their dead. Your duty is to go and spread the news of the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, sir, but first let me go and say goodbye to my people at home. Jesus said to him, Once the hand is laid on the plough, no one who looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So the Gospel reflection is for Wednesday today, 26th week in ordinary time. And we had the reading from Luke 9, 57 to 62. In today's Gospel, Jesus meets with three people, one of whom he calls to follow him and two who offer to follow him. The two who offer to follow him seem to make very 
reasonable requests of Jesus before they set out with him. One wanted to bury his father and the other wanted to say goodbye to his family. However, Jesus denies both requests and insists that they leave with him right away. There is an urgency to the work that Jesus is doing, which overrides all the other considerations, even the closest family duties and ties. We get a glimpse here of the urgent pace at which Jesus must have worked during his relatively short public ministry. And it was short, approximately three years. Perhaps he sensed that his time was short and that there was much to be done if God's work in which he was engaged was to endure into the future. We can be grateful for Jesus' sense of urgency because God's good work through Jesus has touched the lives of all of us 2,000 years after Jesus' death and resurrection. We all need something of Jesus' sense of urgency today. We certainly do with this. It is getting close, you know, to a World War Three. Open our eyes. We have to open our eyes. These idiots there, real idiots, across the world, round the world, and all behind it is this evil of a one world government thing. Communism. Communism is the opposite of Christianity. Yes, Russia is communist. Notwithstanding inside it, there are Christians too. So we have evil around the whole world. Christianity and communism. The two don't mix. The two cannot mix. Judas in his way, was worldly. It was the money. He wanted Jesus to, you know, enrich him. He gave a kiss on Jesus' face. He betrayed him. That's how it is. You're either for God or against God. You can't have a foot in both camps. The Lord needs us to answer his call today. It is urgent, more urgent than ever. We can be easily tempted to put it off until tomorrow or at some time in the future. What the Lord may be asking of us now. We sense a call to do something which we know is in keeping with the Lord's good work. And we hesitate. We allow less important considerations to hold us back and deflect us. It's urgent now. No joke. If there's a World War Three, half the world would be gone to oblivion. And how many souls lost? How many souls for God, for Jesus Christ, lost? Forget about all the other religions. There's only one religion, Christianity. Christ is the only one way, the truth and the life. As one of the psalm expresses it, Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Growing into the Lord's sense of urgency with the help of the Holy Spirit is an important dimension of our daily baptismal calling. We're all guilty, me included, of not doing more. But the way the world is going now we're on a point of no return. So it's still going to be a choice between heaven and hell. And our loved ones who are in comfort and they, they don't seem to look at anything. Their eyes are closed. Their eyes sadly are all closed to God. and any, Because they're all comfortable. When war starts, no one's going to be comfortable. 
so many deaths, we won't be able to cope. We can't say it's not going to happen because there's mad people out there, including Liz Truss, willing to press the button if needs be. If needs be. Nuclear. Doesn't anyone know what happened when the bombs went off in Japan? And Chernobyl, what happened? It was deserted. Destruction. Do you want to live through a nuclear war? And be left alive? I'm not sure that anyone would want to be. Who's going to help who? This is dangerous times. We've got mad men in char and women in charge of the w world. Evil people. Evil, evil people. This is a very scary time and they're not going to tell you the truth on the BBC. They're not going to tell you the truth on CNN and all these things. They're not going to tell you the good side of Russia. They're going to paint it all. They've been very restrained and blaming and saying things that are absolute lies. And obviously... The, the, the one thing that's wrong with Russia is it's communist, in my eyes. That is the one thing that's wrong with it. Their management seems to be less immoral than the rest of the Western world. The way they seem from outward appearances to live. They're not as immoral as the West. So there's hope for them yet. But we... We are totally immoral in our living standards and our behaviour for the last 50 or 60 years. I put my hands up. I'm guilty. I've done, I've done things that are against God's commandments. Not now, because I'm old. I'm very old. But when I was younger, I left my Christian faith. But I came back and I've stayed. I came back. I was screaming to be near God <laughs> not for myself but for someone I love very deeply and God never let me go from then and that's a long time ago uh, 30 years and I'm 75 so yeah but we all have to turn to God every one of us and try and drag our loved ones with us we are really facing very difficult times I mean, you need to seek and search the truth. I'm not making it up, I can assure you. The facts are out there. And if you're on YouTube, which you are, you can find the truth than those who've only got televisions. You can. You can ask God to give you a discerning spirit. We need to unite in prayer. We can pray against this. This is evil, evil, demonic uh, across the whole world demonics this is in the battle we're in spiritual warfare but we'll soon be in practical warfare if those spirits in those people create a real war a physical war we're already in the spiritual war fighting for your souls that's what this is about Fighting for your soul so you go to hell with Satan and his fallen angels. That's what he wants. He hates mankind and he hates God. And he wants God's children all to go to hell with him. That's the reality. Satan hates mankind. He wants every one of you to suffer for eternity with him. Well, I'd like you to all repent and turn to God. And worship Jesus Christ and the Holy Trinity. God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. If you don't know any other prayer, pray the Our Father every day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Pray that every day. Even if you know no other prayer, that is the pray Lord's Prayer that Jesus gave to all of us, no matter what language, no matter where you are, that is the prayer that you must say. Deliver us from all evil. And I wish you all well. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your comments. May you always be happy and joyful in the Lord. And I don't care if you think I'm mad. I'd rather be mad for God than mad for the devil.